Hi, in this video I'll be taking a look at the newly released NanoPi TC4 from the friendliest SPC makers on the market. I'll be running through the usual lineup of tests that I do, but I reckon this board deserves two videos, so this is part one. You'll be a bit quiet. What? What's going on? Have a seat. You look tired. I hear you are looking for some merchandise. Um. <coughs> what value will you accept? Accept? But. I, I thought... I can see this is your first time. First time? No. It's not... It's not my first time. Actually, I... What um, value will you accept? Right. I, hundreds. I desperately need hundreds. I, I really... I really need hundreds. Sure. We have plenty. Would this be suitable? The Nano PC T4 is yet another SBC based on the Rock Chip RK3399 SOC. In the past, we've seen the all winner A80, Samsung S5 P6818, High Silicon Kirin 960, and others. But they are all suffering from the lack of Linux driver support, especially when it comes to graphics. However, the RK3399 is one of the better supported 8 core SOCs around. So, what does the new Nano PC T4 give you? Starting from the top right, working clockwise, we have a DisplayPort output, MIPI DSi 1, PWM controlled fan output, boot and recovery buttons, two USB 2.0 host ports, HDMI 2.0 out, mic, audio out, USB 3.0, gigabit ethernet, 12 volt 3 amp DC jack, reset button, USB type C that provides another DisplayPort out, but you can't power the board from it. RTC battery header, console UART, a second MIPI CSI1, as well as a MIPI CSI2 header, power button, LEDs for power and status, micro SD slot, an almost compatible Raspberry Pi GPIO header, and some extra ADC header pins thrown in. When I say almost compatible, this is due to the fact that the last 14 pins have GPIOs that work on 1.8 volt logic levels. Also, even though power and ground pins match up to the Pi, the GPIO functions don't quite match up, so forget using most of the Pi hats on the market. In terms of semis on the board, we have one part of the LPDDR3 RAM, EMMC flash, the mighty RK3399 SOC, gigabit transceiver based on the RTL8211E, AP6356S based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, then there's a bunch of RT9724 PMIX and several DC buck converters providing the 5V, 3.3V and 1.8V rails. On the flip side we have an M2 key slot and other semis like a USB Type-C controller, ITC logic level converters and ESD protection. This board is a pretty decent design. There's an adequate amount of ESD protection and all the required PMIC control for the Rocketship SOC is there. It's so densely packed, I doubt you'll be able to fit anything else on. Several years back, the friendly ARM guys weren't that good on documentation, but they have improved a huge amount since. Their wiki website has pretty much everything you need to get started and hack around with this SBC. For my tests, I will be trying out several Linux distro images as well as Android. But for this video, I used the official Ubuntu desktop image. There's several ways of loading up the EMMC flash with an image. I chose to use the Rockchip Loaded tool, which uses the USB Type-C port. If you're running a 64-bit OS, then you may need to install the required 32-bit libraries. Once installed properly, extract the boot image files. Next, connect up the USB Type-C port to your PC, 
and also the DC jack for power. Then you'll need to hold down the recovery button and then press the power button. This will put it into recovery mode and you should see it appear on your PC like this. You'll need to burn the image files in the correct order using these commands. Then power off and connect up HDMI and Ethernet. Then press the power button. I reached a fully working desktop in around 10 seconds. That's pretty good going so far. So checking out a few things first. I2C, yep. Alas, no SPI. And GPIO access is there with 159 GPIOs available on the SOC, but only a handful available to the user. Thermal zones and frequency scaling, check and you have full PMEC access to control voltages around the board. So on to testing. For this initial batch of tests, I use the default heatsink, which isn't really adequate enough. And connected up Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. I also use my handy power logger to track power usage during tests. The Warwart that comes with the Nano PCT4 has a pretty long cable about a metre long and the wires themselves aren't that thick so there would be a fair amount of voltage drop across that length. However, I didn't see any power issues during testing so they seem to have that under control. Moving on to GPIO tests. Yep, my basic LED flashy thing worked without issue but it was a little tricky mapping out all the GPIO pins on the header. If you want to know this mapping, check out my website. For ITC tests, this time I used a TSL2561 LUX sensor, which of course worked okay. The RK3399 does support parallel RGB output, but not all the signals are pushed out on this particular SBC, so unfortunately I couldn't test out my Pi projector with it. Before I launched into the full-on testing, I ran a couple of basic tests just to see what to expect. For the M2 speed tests, I used a run-of-the-mill 256GB SSD. Alas, the Nano PC T4 doesn't support half-length cards. Then I formatted the SSD with the EXT4 file system directly without making any petitions. Running the RBN 7-zip test on the SOC came up with a fairly respectable result. While the Gigabit Ethernet showed up a real-world 700 megabits per second throughput on TCP, and a pretty low UDP jitter. And Wi-Fi saw 8 megabits per second on TCP and 12 milliseconds jitter. Subjective desktop tests were okay, keeping up with a full 1080p YouTube video stream. But playback of one of my H.264 encoded videos was very sluggish. Of course, playing back a full 4K video was as slow as a wet week. But playing back the demo video that came with the friendly ARM distro was fine. Checking out the RBN forums, it turned out that someone has managed to get full 4K video playback going without issue. So I'll need to follow this up in the next video. Before moving on to the full tests, I noticed that the gigabit ethernet would occasionally drop out. This usually happened when saturating the NIC with data. So there's a few things that still need to be sorted out on the software side. This video is being sponsored by JLC PCB. If you want some quick turnaround prototype PCBs, then I highly recommend them. They can produce one to six layer boards from 0.4 to two millimeters thick with a track width down to 0.01 millimeters and support for BGAs, cutouts, fingers, and other esoteric things. If you want to check out all their capabilities, then click on the link below. They are currently offering 10 PCBs for only $2 and if you are a first time customer, you'll get $20 off shipping off your first order. Pretty good. So after running a battery of Phronix tests over a week, what results did I see? GL Mark II was roughly 27 times faster than an Odroid XU4. I couldn't find any ARM based OpenCV tests for comparison, but the Nano PC T4 is around four times slower than the nearest high end desktop. Memory speed tests showed it outperforming everything else on cache bench reads, but slowing down on writes. The Nano PC T4 was always at the top on RAM speed tests, occasionally being pipped by the Udo X86. The stream benchmark showed up similar results, as well as the tiny mem bench test, being pipped by the Jetson boards. 
System tests like the Apache benchmark showed it to outperform at least the Odroid XU4 and was regularly beating all other SPCs except the Jetson boards. While the Stress NG test showed up the Odroid XU4 coming out way on top for certain results, also I really wouldn't want to use the T4 as a desktop replacement because it regularly appeared to be one tenth the performance of a mid-range desktop. Computation tests had a mixed bag of results, mostly coming out on top, but the slow cache write speeds seemed to let things down. I was surprised with the kernel compilation results. Having four more cores than the Raspberry Pi should have made it much faster. Moving on to language benchmarks, the T4 was outperforming everything again on Golang, especially on the all-important garbage collection test. Perl had the same result, as well as PHP and Python. Video decoding benchmarks puts the T4 on par with the Odroid XU4 at least. And database benchmarks puts the T4 once again back on top, being beaten by the Jetson SPCs. Overall, the Nano PC T4 outperformed every SPC except for the Jetson boards. The 8 cores are great to have, but we saw that the RK3399 SOC was being let down by cache write performance. So, on to power consumption. On the power side of things, I saw a max current draw of 1.12 amps, with an average of 514 milliamps during testing, with an idle of 417 milliamps. Bear in mind that this is at 12 volts, so it's a bit on the high side, even for idling. The SOC temperature rose to 91.7 degrees Celsius with an average of 64 and an idle of 51 degrees Celsius. This is with an average room temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. So clearly the SOC needed a much better heatsink. In fact I should have put the board on something else as it damaged my desktop due to the heat. So the Nano PC T4 looks like a pretty decent SPC. It's a little pricey but you're getting a fair amount of features for your money and most of the time it beats all the other SPCs out there. On the downside, it'll be a while before we see some decent stock graphics drivers, especially 3D related. Friendly Arms should really have given the option of powering the board from USB Type-C, and the lack of support for smaller M2 cards might be an issue for some people. So that wraps up part one of this review. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to hit like, and if you haven't already subscribed, it'll be great to have you on board. If you want to support me further, you can join the fabulous group of patrons I have over at Patreon. Thanks for watching, and see you next week. That's right. What's going on? What's going on? Can you read your lines first, and then... I can't remember. What further will you accept? <laughs> That's some godfather! It's a godfather! Have a seat! Hey man, what's up? <laughs> I hear you are looking for some... <laughs> much <laughs> <laughs> I can't take myself. I can see this is your first time. <laughs> Except. <laughs> oh, that was good, that was good. That's it just seems. <laughs> <laughs> it's not focusing properly. What value? No. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me do this, let me do this. <laughs> More. <laughs> Stop it, Dad. Come on, this is serious. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>